What's up everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this new series, you will learn how to make a space-based alien shooter game, which is also sometimes called Space Invaders. Obviously, it's not the arcade game from years ago, but just like it, we'll be having zombie clones coming from the top. The game itself will be having four different levels, each spanning for a time period of 30 seconds. Of course, when a zombie hits you, you have a nice little explosion, and there's a simple end screen when you win, similar to when you lose. Alright, that's enough talk, let's get right into our code. Once you've set up your Scratch 3 editor, the first thing you need to do is to delete your cat sprite, and then from choose a new sprite, click upload sprite. I'm going to upload this one which says starfighter.svg, which is our spaceship. And in case you do not know, all the files will be linked in the description below, whether it's the art or the code. So you can head over to the Google Drive attachment and download all the necessary files. Once you have your Starfighter in there, the next thing I'm going to do is to head over to variables and set up three different variables. The first one is going to be um, called level and you can uh, set this up to be for all sprites and I'm going to uh, use all uppercase letters to signify this so that we have an idea which is what. Click OK. The next one, I'm going to set it for the sprite only, and this is going to be called speed, all right? And after you're done with that, I'm going to set those two up right away. So when the green flag is clicked, uh, I'm going to set level two. So head over to variables, grab a set level two, one, and then you need to set speed to five, all right? So set speed to five. After this, I'm going to make another variable for all sprites called score. And this one is going to keep the uh, track, uh, it's going to keep track of the score of the player. Now this variable isn't really necessary since it's going to be a time based game, but I'll just put that in. So initially I will set the score to be zero and uh, now I'm going to head over to the backdrops and make a change. So within backdrops, click on upload backdrop and the backdrop that we need to upload is going to be called, um, I'm actually going to upload all three right away. But as of now, the backdrop which we will need is going to be space.svg. So I'm going to delete background one, put space on top, and then within the code of our starfighter, I'm going to say switch backdrop to um, not win, but instead space.svg or just space. All right, so after you're done with that, what I'm going to do now is actually let me put that first, and uh, I will actually broadcast two messages. All right, the first message is going to be called initialize, and the second message is going to be called, let me just type that in, so it's going to be initialize, and the second message is going to be called start game. So I've done this in some other games and you probably are aware of what's going to happen, but in case you're not, don't worry too much. All right, so start game. And both of these need to have that weight in there, otherwise your code will crash. That's going to be our entire first script. And now we can get into what happens when we receive those two messages. So when I receive initialize, I'll first be clearing all the graphic effects. And uh, this is because we will be using the ghost effect a little bit later on. So it's essential to, you know, be back to this kind of mode what, uh, right when the game starts. So after you're done clearing all the graphic effects, I'm going to hide the sprite. And uh, this is done so that we can show all the sprites uh, like at once when we receive start game. So i uh, just adding that right there. I'm actually going to zoom in so that you guys can see better. And after this, I'm going to add in another variable. And this is going to be called sprite movement. And this is going to control whether uh, all the sprites can move or not. And once again, you can set them up to uh, set that up to be for all sprites. Click OK, and now within uh, this, you want to set sprite movement to be yes, which means our sprites can move about. After that, um, just two more lines of code. The first thing we'll just have to do is set rotation style to be do not rotate, because in case we set it to be left to right, whenever you know we touch this wall right here, it's going to go upside down, which is not what we want. So set it to be do not rotate. And uh, you also want to go to some coordinate. And in this case, we're going to go to x0, y negative 110. So it's right at the bottom. And uh, I'm just going to remove this height for a minute and just, uh, just call in that code. And you can see that this is going to be our starting point. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to hit the green flag. Obviously, everything is going to hide. But you can see that we have our space background set up. And that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to head over to variables and then hide a couple of them, such as sprite movement and the uh, speed of the player. And yep, I will be showing these two variables and the time left variable, which we will be adding in later. So I'm going to move the score variable about to the center and I'm going to move the level to the top left. Now let's get into what happens when we receive the start game message. So when we receive start game and I'm going to grab that block from events, 
Um, I will be first making a function, right? And uh, when I receive start game, there we go. I'll be making a function called begin, which will be responsible for initializing everything. So I'll be running without screen refresh and I'm gonna call this block name uh, begin. So begin, and that is pretty much it. So I'm gonna call that block right here when we receive start game. And we'll get into coding the begin block later, as of now just get into the next line of code, which is going to be a repeat until. Okay, and here we need to set up another variable, which is going to be called current level. And uh, this is basically going to be what it is, what the level is at the beginning. And you'll understand where we use this later on. For now, just set it for the sprite only. So we need to repeat until not current level equals to level. Because the level is going to increment while the current level is not going to until we receive, you know, this begin, um, until we call this begin function. Anyway, so repeat until not level equal current level. And uh, what we need to do in there is going to be make a new block again and uh, do not set it to be run without screen refresh. I'm gonna just call it movement, all right? Just click okay. And the movement is going to be responsible for moving our spaceship. So now before I get into the further lines of code, I will be you know coding these two things in. So within begin, I'll first be setting current level to be level. Uh, at the end of this, I will need to show all right, so put in a show there. And now I'll make another variable, which is going to be called bullet timer. And I'll explain where this uh, is used a little bit later on when we are coding in the bullet sprite. Set it once again for the sprite only and click OK. So initially we will be setting our bullet timer to I think six, uh, but you can uh, actually zero, I'm sorry. We need to set it to be zero as of now, but we will be you know setting the bullet max timer to be six, which we will do a little bit later, but in this video itself, so um, that's going to control the flow of bullets basically. Don't worry too much about that. And after you're done with that, that is pretty much all we will need in our begin function. And uh, within our movement, things are going to be pretty simple. We'll have an if then for the right arrow key and an if then for the left arrow key. Not touching, but if key right arrow is pressed, then we change x by, so change x by, um, we're just gonna put in the speed variable in there. And um, if the left arrow key is pressed, then we will change x by negative of the speed and we can either type in zero minus speed or in my case, I'm just gonna type in minus one times the speed. All right, so that is pretty much all you will need in movement and let us put in the block right there. So after this, we will be broadcasting a message to move our zombies. So I'm gonna say broadcast and wait once again, uh, but this is going to be called move zombies. All right, so new message, move zombies. Perfect. I'm going, to click, uh, I'm going to click OK. And after that, I will be making another block, which is shoot. So since now, uh, since um, this point or till this point, we haven't had anything that shoots, you know, bullets out. And this is going to be responsible for doing that. So I'm going to click OK. And uh, let's not click run without screen refresh. I'm going to put that block uh, below and I'm going to call it right here. Now within this, we will have to add in some clones. So what I'm gonna do is to make in a new sprite and I'm just gonna paint a tiny little bullet. So zoom in as much as you possibly can. And then I'm just gonna make a bullet in this bright purplish color, which is this one. Uh, I guess it's pinkish purple. Anyway, I'm gonna set the outline to be transparent and um, just you know paint one like that. I think this is a pretty small size for a bullet and I think this would work better and I'm gonna go ahead with this. Make sure you center it correctly, otherwise you're gonna get in some position errors. All right, I'm gonna rename, uh, I'm gonna rename this to be bullet. Oops, not bullet, bullet. And uh, after this, I'm gonna head back to the starfighter. Within shoot, I'm gonna say if space key is pressed because we will be only doing stuff if the space bar is pressed. So if key space is pressed, then I'm gonna have another if, and here's where I'm gonna use that bullet timer. If six is, um, greater than or bullet timer is greater than six, not less than, greater than six. In this case, we will shoot. Otherwise, we will not shoot. And what the bullet timer will do this way is it's going to set back to zero right here. And um, here we're gonna change bullet timer by one. So after you know we set it back to zero, uh, for six um, frames basically, we will not be able to shoot a bullet which is going to make sure that we can't just spam our bullets and there are only you know a couple of bullets coming out every time we press the space bar. So this is going to be responsible for that. And as far as creating the actual bullet is concerned, uh, we just need to type in create clone of bullet. And that is pretty much all you will need in shoot. 
Now what I'm going to do right here is to make another variable and this variable is going to be called I believe show clones or create clones that's what I'm going to call it and uh, this is going to control both our bullet as well as our starfighter when the game ends. Don't worry too much about it now I'm going to set it for all sprites only and then click OK. Uh, but within your bullet you can type this in your initialize so uh, when I receive initialize I will be setting uh, create clones to be yes all right. And within the starfighter, I'm going to head back to this main loop right here and have another if then condition. And I'm going to say if create clones or um, if create clones equals to yes. So if create clones is equal yes. And that is pretty much going to be it. And I'm going to end this video right here. It's been, you know, quite some bit of code that we've um, churned out. And in the next video, we'll be completing both our spaceship or the starfighter as well as the bullet and we'll also be coding in a little bit of our zombies. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.